In the news at this hour, tornadoes ripped through North Carolina. Tonight, hundreds injured, homeless, dozens of people are dead. A special Action News 5 report tonight with the latest information from throughout the state. I'm John Hudson. The news is next on Action News 5. Wilson Dotson wants you to come by and see why everybody says we'll deal or call toll free. That's Wilson Dotson, Wilson, North Carolina. We're wired for weather now on Action News 5. Uh, the wind started blowing and then this end here, it started coming up and then the house just picked up, just went up in there and it just dropped back down. I heard that there was a tornado watch out, but I didn't pay it much mind because, you know, we've heard it so much in the past. I was going to lie down on the floor, but before I could get on the floor, you know, the trailer went over and I went out the opposite window and my wife went out the sliding doors. Tonight, tornadoes, the terror, the tragedy. A special Action News 5 report, a state torn apart. Good evening, I'm John Hudson. The worst storm of the century. No one in this state has ever seen anything like it. Just last night at this time, about 50 people in North Carolina went about their early evening routines, never suspecting they would be the victims of the killer storm that was about to hit them. Hundreds have been hurt. Now, it may be hard for you to comprehend what you're about to see. It is the tragic story of death and destruction. The destruction and loss of life across southern and eastern North Carolina is immense. We have an aerial view of Red Springs in Robeson County. This community and at least 20 others look like they've been hit by bombs. Here is the latest information we now have on the loss of life and damage. The State Emergency Command Center says at least 50 people have been killed and at least 650 have been injured. Earlier reports indicated a higher death toll, but state officials now tell us that some of the victims had been counted twice. A Sampson County was hardest hit with 11 dead, 10 dead in Pitt County. The Twisters claim seven lives in both Bertie and Duplin counties, but people are dead and many more left homeless in many more counties. Naturally, tonight our state is reeling from a crisis, the kind of crisis that makes us very aware of how important accurate weather information can be. For accurate up-to-the-minute information, of course, like that, we go to Bob DeBartleben and our meteorologists in the Weather Center. Let's go to Bob right now for some more information, Bob. Well, John and Adele, the, the tragic thing about all of this is, first, the National Weather Service has the primary responsibility for issuing all the watches and the warnings. Now, they issue the watch when weather conditions are favorable for these storms to form. Doesn't necessarily say they will form, but the conditions are favorable for this. However, because of the complexity of a storm system that actually produces the twister, it is impossible to say when and where the twister will actually touch down. So the only time a warning can be issued is when the twister is on the ground and unfortunately then it has done its damage. Here in North Carolina, it started down below Charlotte and it came on up into Scotland County. Then the twisters hopscotched around into Robeson, Cumberland County. Then they started on a northeasterly movement up in the Sampson, Duplin, Wayne County. And then they went up into the northeastern part of the state, Lenore, Green, and then up in the far corner, Pitt, Bertie, Gates, and Perquimans County and Hertford County. And it was just a solid line and that line just stretched all the way from down through the co southern coastal plain up into the northeast. And so that's the way that went. It's a tragic shame that we cannot give any more than that. But those are how severe thunderstorms can be. And by the way, a little bit later on in the program, we'll show you just how these storms are formed. John? All right, thank you, Bob. You know, it is difficult for many of us to realize just how much damage has been done around our state tonight. Now, we've been covering this story for you since last night. Several of our crews have been out all evening, and we do have a number of uh, complete reports for you tonight. Well, you've just seen where it happened, but now the terror, the shock of the actual night. The people who had to live through the hours of darkness, knowing of the destruction. Ryan Glazer and Art Howard were on the scene in many of the towns that felt the first impact of the storms. 
A sleepless and tragic night for residents of the small South Carolina border town of McCall. A tornado hit here just after dark. Winds of up to 100 miles per hour ripped walls off homes, roofs off businesses, and sent trees crashing down atop parked cars. Many survivors say the storm took them by surprise. I heard that there was tornado watch out, but I didn't pay it much mind because, you know, we've heard it so much in the past. When the black twisting cloud moved on, it left behind believers and a silence only broken by the sounds of the wild. Ten miles north, 7.10 p.m., the first tornado hits eastern North Carolina. The small crossroads community of Johns is flattened. The only gas station is in shambles. The pumps rip from their foundation. The man driving this pickup truck was killed. Wesley Russian saw him die. The truck was coming down 501, going toward Lornburg, I guess, and the storm picked it up and threw it through a store building. That John's firehouse crumbled. The trucks were spared. The owner of a convenience store watched the back wall yanked apart. A lone dog searched for her newborn puppies. The high winds moved north. In Maxton, the telephone company's tower collapsed. Those who dared to venture along the rural Robertson County roads found treacherous conditions, a maze of downed trees. Robinson County was hit hard. The night dragged on. Another twister carved a devastating path in the town of Red Springs. Utility poles hung only by their cables. Trees snapped like matchsticks, forming a barrier which could only be broken by chainsaws. While rescue crews began moving into the various disaster areas of the Sand Hills, victims were being rushed to the only hospital within 50 miles. Scotland County Memorial in Laurenburg treated more than 100 people with injuries ranging from cuts and bruises to broken ribs and heart attacks. Jasper Bundy was in his home when the twister hit. The next thing he saw was his backyard and a mound of debris. Well, it threw me out. I was out in the field. And I don't know what, what all hit me, but I'm just thankful to be alive. Isola McLaughlin was asleep. She was slashed by broken glass. It told me against the mirror. You know, it was a loud noise, you know. So I can't explain that. I don't want to do that no more. Many who were treated and released had no home to return to. For them, a cot and blanket at Lauren Berg's American Legion post. Just was afraid to stay there by myself. Just me and my kids. While victims slept, convoys of power crews moved in to restore electricity. The National Guard was moved in to restore order, warding off potential looters who might take advantage of the disastrous conditions. Kind of looks like Lebanon on television. <laughs> As 5 a.m. neared, work crews were successfully picking up the pieces, putting a dent in the massive cleanup operation ahead. Brian Glazer, Action News 5. And today in daylight, we got a better look at what this deadly storm did to our state. Local and state officials trying to survey the miles of devastation couldn't do it from the ground. They had to take to the air in National Guard helicopters. Bill Draper spent the day with Governor Jim Hunt traveling from one area of wreckage to another. The governor was greeted at his first stop in Maxton by massive destruction. Scores of families stood by their ruined homes, stunned and dazed. They said the tornado roared through here about 7.30 at night. All the wind was coming along, you know, and it sounded like a train. So I looked out the window, I couldn't see a thing but white. The wind hit the house, and it just tore up this just piece of just going over to we. What did everybody do? We just fell out and got to praying. The governor surveyed the damage and tried to console some of the families who lost everything but their lives. So thankful you've got all your family right, safe. Right, Yes, they got to make a week. That's right, Have he will. Here. And I wish you the very best. I'm going to look at all of the state today. It seems unbelievable that as bad as the destruction was here in Maxton, there were other areas hit even worse. Just up the road in Red Springs, the tornadoes carved a path of destruction right through the center of town. There were several people killed here, as many as 75 injured. Businesses, homes, and an elementary school were leveled. The entire town was out of commission. I wouldn't even want to estimate how much damage it is, but it's just extensive property damage, homes, businesses, of course, downtown business sections just devastated. The governor followed the storm path to face it, where there were more people killed and injured. Everywhere he went, the stories were the same. Tales of terror and destruction and death. Stories of houses that disintegrated, of cars and trucks tossed around like toys, and frequently miraculous tales of survival. You certainly can't uh, protect yourself from a storm of this kind. Uh, 
we're lucky we didn't have ten times as many people killed, frankly. But uh, the, the highway patrol was immediately at work. Uh, the National Guard was out there. Uh, all kinds of emergency uh, medical service people, the EMTs and the firemen, uh, I think they've just done a marvelous job. At every stop, the governor listened to horror stories from the victims and promised to petition the federal government for disaster aid. The governor has said repeatedly that he has never seen such destruction in his life. With the exception of those who've been in a war zone, neither has anybody else. Bill Draper, Action News 5. Now imagine what it would be like to have the job of coordinating all the emergency crews for the state. There are some people tonight who don't have to imagine that. That's exactly what they've been doing. Our reporter Tim Kent is at the North Carolina Command Center on John Jones Street in downtown Raleigh. Let's go to Tim now for a live report on what's happening there. Tim? That's right, John. We're in the basement of a downtown Raleigh office building that serves as the headquarters for the state's emergency response team. We just have these recently re revised casualty figures for North Carolina. 43 people dead, 796 people people injured. More than 22 people, 2,200 people have been left homeless and are in shelters. Now most of the people that you see here in this room will remain here until at least some sense of normalcy returns to those areas affected most by widespread tornado damage. Representatives from major agencies such as the Highway Patrol, the Red Cross, and the National Guard are here coordinating their field activities. They are going to be trying to make all the crucial decisions here, how to provide the necessary food and shelter and how to clear the debris and get word to the people on the scene number of disaster drills during the year and, and the people that are here in Raleigh and the people around the county know what they're doing. So uh, uh, they know how to go about getting the help that the people need. It's just a matter of everything coming together. And when you've got something that's traumatic, it just takes a while to, to start get things moving again. The state's emergency response team will be here around the clock, working in shifts until the crisis is resolved, which of course may be quite some time from now. Now there is one very important point that the people here would like to stress to you folks at home. Please do not drive your cars to the affected areas in curiosity or if you're looking to find loved ones who may be lost. The reason is because there is so much traffic on the roads to and from the damaged areas that there are traffic jams and quite frankly the emergency teams are having a tough time getting the necessary people there to help out. We're going to have an updated report from here a little bit later in the newscast. Now back to John. All right. Thank you, Tim. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We've seen homes, businesses, entire homes in shambles. And even now, even though the homes may be rubble, hundreds of families are trying to rebuild their hopes tonight in the wake of the terrible twister. We'll have their story. And more tonight on where to go for help during this emergency. Stay with us. We're right. When I run out of things, it's good to know I can run right around the corner to win dixie We're right for you. Bab detergent is $1.29, and Harvest Fresh White Potatoes are $1.39. We're right. Pinky Pig Fresh Hole or Rib Half Pork Loin is 99 cents a pound at Win dixie We're right for you. Take home our WD brand Pure Ground Beef on special for 99 cents a pound. Right. Win dixie we're right for you. This is it. Time to buy that new Pontiac you've been waiting for. Coggins got over 200 brand new 1984 Pontiacs in stock right now at prices too good to pass up. New Pontiac 1000s from 48.95, Sunbird 2000s from 58.95, 6000s from 78.95, Grand Prix from 88.95, and 1984 Firebird starting at 83.39. So hey. Pizza, Stouffer's Pizza, luscious toppings on a French bread crust, so crispy brown. All those great ingredients, it's so easy to pick up, but so hard to put down. Help yourself, help yourself, help yourself to Stouffer's Pizza. Real cheese toppings, yes indeed, just one hand is all you need. Help yourself, help yourself, help yourself to Stouffer's Pizza. Help yourself to Stouffer's Pizza. North Carolina, your state, is a special place. The variety vacation land, the historic seacoast, the gently rolling hills of the Midlands, the majestic mountains of the West. Enjoy the sights and sounds of North Carolina. Spring delight, summer charm, autumn elegance, and winter wonders when the North Carolina Division of Travel and Tourism presents the history and beauty of your state, North Carolina, a special kind of splendor. Sunday at 4.30 right here on WRAL-TV 5. 
When something as devastating as what happened last night happens, there always seems to be that calm following the storm. That calm came in the early morning hours in Roseboro, one of the hardest hit sections. The night masked much of the chaos left behind by the storm. There was a quiet rain that seemed to cleanse the earth thrown around by the winds. Dogs were barking, birds were chirping. It was too quiet to be normal. When dawn finally came, the sunlight began uncovering the unbelievable ruins in the small rural community. People began arriving at their homes, finding all that was left was snarled metal and wood and a few belongings wrapped around trees. Photographer Holly Woodward and reporter Nina Schlossberg were with some of the people of Roseboro as they began arriving at those ruins. For some, the wind swept away much more than personal effects. There were no words to comfort Steve Hulam and his family today. Last night, he lost his 84-year-old grandmother and his 8-year-old brother. They died here in what used to be a trailer. I picked it up and uh, we saw the feet and we called down and told them, you know, we had found. It's hard to believe what you're seeing was once a home, yet last night it was a home where a grandmother embraced a small, frightened boy. When they found my grandmother, finally they were looking for her, they couldn't find her or my little brother. And when they found him, they found him um, up on the porch of the house, way like this here, and they said that... Um, he was still in her arms. He was like eight years old. Hulam stood by and watched friends and family as they wept over the debris. He couldn't believe what happened. It happens to everybody else, but you know, it's the, you know, you never believe it's happened to you. you know. I mean, we, you know, right here we see things like this on TV. It happens out in the Midwest or something, you know, not around here, and then all of a sudden it happens, and you know, it happens to you. It's, strange. But it did happen here. To others, the winds were not as brutal. They destroyed homes but spared life. The wind started blowing and then this end here, it started coming up and then the house just picked up, just went up in the air and it was dropped back down. For Troy Strickland, there's a tomorrow, a future ahead because of his friends. People are taking in their neighbors and really helping them out. But this devastation has been too painful for the Hulums. They're leaving. Well, this place is a head look. She don't want to live here anymore. In Roseboro, Nina Schlossberg, Action News 5. In Mount Olive, those winds wiped out an entire subdivision, and tonight that town struggles with what to do. Clarence Scott reports the cleanup will be long and painful. At dawn this morning, the survivors came back to view the damage and began the cleanup. A pine forest subdivision on the Duplin-Wayne County line has been flattened. Whole houses wiped out, and not much left to reclaim except some clothing and the family pet. It's heard the wind starting to blow real bad, and we run to the bedroom and got under the bed, and we could hear the wind lights busting out, and we really didn't know how bad it was until one of the neighbors came and got us out. Miraculously, no one was killed here, but on the other side of Mount Olive, two people lost their lives, another one in Faison. The twister hit here, ripping steel beams off this empty warehouse, toppling grain storage bins, and pressing power lines to the ground. That is now the biggest concern, restoring electricity to the area. We uh, go to the most populated areas first, and uh, work just as hard as we can and quick as we can. And the cleanup here in the south side of Mount Olive will take the longest. And city officials have already put a disaster plan into motion. Our main thrust right now is starting to clean up. Uh, we're going to start a, a central dumping area where we can, can move this stuff to temporarily. And that's what the main part of what we're going to do today and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Even with the aid and assistance of the town, the cleanup will be costly for these residents. It's the emotional price of losing a home that can never be repaid. Clarence Scott, Action News 5, Mount Olive. Now this is not just the story of a storm and its devastation, this is the story of people. How they struggle to overcome their losses tonight, how their friends, their neighbors, even complete strangers have reached out to help. It is also the story of how you can help. We'll have more on that in just a moment. Now, for those of you who may not have reached relatives in the areas that were hit by the storms, officials of the State Crime Control and Public Safety Division suggest you call your local Red Cross, the one closest to where you live. The people will there try to get in touch with uh, the Red Cross in the area you are concerned about. Another suggestion, get in contact with emergency operations and the police command post in the county where you are trying to contact people. The numbers of those agencies are listed in your telephone book. Meanwhile, the National Guard has secured
enter the town of Red Springs. They're not allowing anyone, even residents and relatives of residents, into that town. Still to come on Action News 5, hospitals. How did they cope with the hundreds injured by the tornadoes? We'll have a report. And again, North Carolina has called out the National Guard to help in the aftermath. We'll tell you how they're mobilizing when we come back. Only Saturday, March 31st, inside the Cumberland County Memorial Auditorium and Arena. It's the Toyota Factory Distributor Authorized Truck Rodeo Sale. A roundup of hundreds of trucks and hundreds in savings. Plus, buy any new truck and get a bedliner. All trucks are branded with special low prices. And Rain or Shine Finance Teams can have you driving your bargain truck home the same day. Saturday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. inside the Cumberland County Memorial Auditorium and Arena. Save your bucks, buy our trucks, and get a bedliner. What makes BB&T different from any other bank? Quality, it's an attitude, being the best you can be. At BB&T, we value things money can't buy. Things like commitment, integrity, performance. So come see why some of the best things about BB&T have no limits, penalties, or federal regulations. isn't enough. The golden honey isn't enough. The pure bran and slow baking with no added preservatives isn't enough to call this wheat bread home pride. What makes it home pride is real creamery butter. Home pride splits each loaf, then pours on real creamery butter and lets it bake right in. It gives our wheat bread a taste that's really mm. special. Home pride butter top wheat. Nature's best ingredients baked better with butter. The tornado's devastation struck Cumberland County, too, laying waste to a strip two miles wide, seven miles long in the Beaver Dam Township. More than 150 rescue workers combed the rural areas in the rain, searching for injured and homeless. Scores of people were taken to Cape Fear Valley Hospital with broken bones, concussions, and internal bleeding. One person there was killed. A local elementary school was turned into a shelter for the homeless. Tonight, those people have been taken in by friends and neighbors who escaped the destruction. Now, one reason life is returning to normal tonight for thousands of people is the hospital's role in dealing with this disaster. Many hospitals had no choice but to activate their emergency disaster plans. For some of them, this is a first. Denise Boyer reports. Fractures were just one of the problems doctors here at Scotland County Memorial Hospital in Lorenberg had to handle. Emergency rooms were cramped with frightened emotional people in pain and needing quick attention. This was the worst disaster imaginable for these people, and the hospital staff was ready for anything. We started receiving the first group of patients about 8 o'clock, and I guess we learned as time went on that there were going to be many, many more uh, patients brought in for uh, attention, and we didn't know how many there were. Nevertheless, we did implement in our full disaster plan. Most hospitals rarely, if ever, put an emergency disaster plan in action. For instance, Mount Olive Family Medical Center has practiced drills, but never knew what would happen when the real disaster came along. And when it did last night... It really went well. Uh, most time when you do drills, it seems like things do not go as well, but everybody pitched in, and I don't really feel like we felt like we were in a pinch. Everybody performed very well. This tiny hospital was bombarded with injured people, but within hours the chaos was under control. The situation was much the same here at Sampson County Memorial Hospital. This was one of the hardest hit areas. Nursing supervisor Wanda Boyette says if it wasn't for the volunteers, the disaster would have been worse. They uh, worked beautifully. We had volunteers that came in. I can't commend the people, the community enough. Multiple volunteers from all professional levels and our EMTs came in and just volunteers and it was just a beautiful experience even though it was a very traumatic experience. A traumatic experience no one ever wants to go through again, even though they know the staff can handle it. Denise Boyer, Action News 5. Destruction from the devastating twisters meant a lot of Tar Heel students had a day off from schools, and that will be the rule for some tomorrow as well. Now, education reporter Renee McCoy is here with us now and has an update on the school closings in our state. That's right, Adele. John, thousands of students all over North Carolina were out of school today, mainly because of extensive power outages. Some county school administrators tell us many students simply weren't able to get to school because of downed trees and damaged homes. Tomorrow, the Eastern Cumberland County School District of Beaver Dam will be closed. Other Cumberland County schools will open on schedule tomorrow. 
in Wayne County, Spring Creek Elementary will be closed indefinitely. Because of extensive roof damage, all other Wayne County schools will resume tomorrow on schedule. In Pitt County, Aiden Elementary will be closed tomorrow. School officials aren't sure when that school will reopen. They're hoping to find an alternative site by next week. About 12 classrooms were damaged. All other Pitt County schools will open tomorrow on schedule. In Robson County, Rex Rennert School will be closed tomorrow. That's near Red Springs. Officials say they're not sure when the school will reopen. However, all other Robertson County schools will be in session tomorrow if electricity has been restored. In Sampson County, all schools will be closed tomorrow. It's a teacher's work day. And one point of clarification, Spring Creek Elementary in Wayne County will be closed to students. However, teachers and school administrators are to report there as usual. Other school systems in our state, which were not mentioned, are scheduled to open tomorrow as usual. All right, thanks, Renee. Thank you, Renee. In just a few moments, we'll be going back to the command center where the statewide disaster coordination is underway. Tim Kidd will have a live report. I'm Tim Smith in Red Springs. If this happened to you, would your insurance be able to handle it? I'll have that story coming up on the Money Desk. In sports, Bobby Allison tries once again to climb into victory lane. And, of course, in the Weather Center, the latest word from Bob DeBartolaven when we come back. <laughs> Nissan trucks on. This is the last roundup for Nissan's 8.8% truck financing. Your last chance to corral the 4x4 with the lowest factory interest rate around. Head him towards the canyon. 8.8%. You can save up to $1,200 depending on options, but only till April 3rd. Hurry, it's your last chance for 8.8% financing on any new Nissan truck at your Datsun dealer. Presenting Sheer Madness, Circuit City's Midnight Madness Sale. Friday only till midnight, every Circuit City will go raving mad with shocking reductions on hundreds of items throughout the store. Friday only, save on this 19-inch diagonal color TV, just $2.18. And Friday only, save on this compact microwave oven, just $1.33. Circuit City's Midnight Madness Sale. Get there by midnight before the curtain falls. A tax-deductible individual retirement account is a solid way to build for the future. And First Union has a wide variety. There are fixed-rate IRAs for competitive interest that stays level. And variable rate, your return follows money market rates. First Union has self-directed IRAs that reinvest in stocks. And Keo plans for retirement of the self-employed. A First Union IRA is a great tax shelter today and a solid way to build for the future. Take a closer look. One is right for you. North Carolina has called out the National Guard to deal with the disaster. One of the most important places the Guard mobilized today was in Robeson County. Leila Tavet has that story. After the fierce wind whipped through Red Springs, it left in its wake a scene of devastation. The National Guard was not far behind. Come on, honey. Some 200 guardsmen like these were assigned to the area, directing traffic, guarding stores ripped open by the storm, and clearing away debris. You see it over there? Any idea how long you'll be out? As long as we need to be. How long could you keep going like this? Well, we plan on going all day. As long as it takes, really. Because they need help, and we, we want to do all we can to help. Helping out as long as they're needed. That's what the guardsmen say they're here for. The ones who just arrived, and the ones like Tommy Lovick, who've been here since first flight, working hard. And the people who live here say they appreciate that help. People like Jeannie Smith. She watched this crew clear away a huge oak. The wind had blown down just inches from her house. But it scared me today. I thought my time had come, I'll tell you. What do you think about these National Guardsmen working in your front yard? <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm just so thankful for him. I really am. One of the guardsmen called out was George Paris. He's also mayor of this town. He says damages here will run into the tens of millions of dollars, and it will take days just to restore essential services like power and water. While that's being done, he says, he'll need the National Guard here. We hope, we, we would like to uh, keep them probably until we get the power on, at least in the downtown uh, areas, in the business areas, until we can get them secured. Talking about a day or two? Yes. The weekend or beyond. When the guardsmen leave, they'll take away with them the gratitude of the whole town. 
It'll be some time before this town returns to normal, but it'll be even longer before the people here forget the help of the National Guard. In Red Springs, I'm Layla Tivet, Action News 5. And we've mentioned the Delar Cruz being out all through the state uh, all night long, and of course my mission to Charlie Gaddy is out uh, on the scene of some of that uh, destruction right now. Uh, we have seen the aftermath. Uh, perhaps it be time to check in with Bob and, and see exactly how all this all this got started. Well, John uh, and Adele, again, the complexity of a tornado just makes it impossible to tell when it will actually hit the ground. Weather experts can define a corridor about 140 miles, 150 miles wide, a corridor, and we can say, okay, we think that the tornadoes will form in that area, but uh, we don't know, we can't say that a twister is actually going to cut, touch down at Jones Crossroads as an example. But let's show you the ingredients that go into forming tornadoes and what, what we look for. Well, we had a big storm system. There was no doubt about it. We already knew it uh, yesterday morning and at noon, this was one of the strongest storm systems, a low pressure area forming down in Georgia and moving into South Carolina. One of the strongest storm systems we'd ever seen, very, very low pressure. Uh, Greg Fischel said yesterday that it could even be lower than Hurricane Hazel. It was doggone close to it. Then we had warm air. We had a warm front branching out over it. This is down along the surface of the earth. In the mid-atmosphere, which we cannot show you on our surface weather chart, there was cold air. So we had the warm air and the cold air was mixing. Then as the warm front moved north, we added moisture coming up out of the Gulf and out of the Atlantic Ocean. Then the final ingredient, and this is what tops it off, the jet stream. And the jet stream was roaring right through South Carolina, North Carolina, up in the upper atmosphere at 150 miles an hour. Those are the ingredients that produced the corridor in eastern North Carolina, about 140 miles wide, that weather experts can say, okay, we think that this is a good area where tornadoes will form, and of course, they certainly did. Well, let's get back into our current statistics now, our conditions around here. High today, a very chilly 52 degrees, our morning's low 43. We're at 48 right now, 51% humidity. The pressure very low yesterday while all of this was going on now is starting to rise, 29.44. We have very, very strong winds coming out of the northwest, and that's due to that storm system. It's up off the Atlantic coast, 14 miles an hour, gusting as high as 25 miles an hour. And here are the lake levels for you. And by the way, one other thing we really want to think about, all of the rivers and streams in eastern North Carolina are starting to rise now. So I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we didn't see some flooding downstream a little bit later on in the week. Now, here's the system today. It's up off the New Jersey coast, and it's causing all sorts of problems. First for us, the wind roaring out of the northwest. For parts of West Virginia, all up through Pennsylvania and New York State, as much as two feet of snow. One little note about Martins, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Started out with three inches of rain, followed by seven inches of snow, Five inches of that snow fell in an hour and a half. That is almost unbelievable. For us now, some showers are hanging off the coast. We've got a lot of cloud cover with us, but that's about it. Now, tomorrow things will start to clear out. We'll start to get a little sunshine. Uh, we'll still have some northwesterly winds flowing, and so our temperatures will stay fairly cool. There's a system now making up back in the Rockies. This is going to move along the lower Mississippi Valley. We don't think now that it's going to bother us by the weekend. If it does at all, it could affect the southeastern part of the state with just some light shower activity on Sunday. Around North Carolina right now, there was a little drizzle uh, up in the mountains. And speaking of the mountains, here's our weekend, partly cloudy, 48 to 58. We've taken out any chances of rain up in the mountains. If you're going down to the coast this weekend, uh, it is going to be uh, fairly pleasant, 57 to 64, north to south. But we'll still have some strong winds and some fairly rough waves. Uh, Sunday, partly cloudy, not much change in the temperature, a little change in the wind direction, and that's about it. As we said, a few showers were up at Asheville, 38 degrees. We might see a few snow flurries up in the northern mountains this evening. Otherwise, right at the moment, cloudy skies, we're at 48 degrees. Let's go with our forecast now for the Triangle area for the remainder of the evening. And this is what we've got. Uh, cloudy skies, uh, temperatures moving down into the 40s overnight tonight. Uh, kind of chilly, especially up on the state line. If you have any vegetation, might take a look. 35 degrees, we'll start to get a break in our cloud. Tomorrow, 35 to 40. 43, start to see the sunshine. Tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day because the McCullers Ruritan is having their barbecue. 
401 South, seven miles, turn left at the Winkin' Blinkin' Light, 58 degrees, good day to eat barbecue tomorrow, I love it, I love the way McCullers Ruritan does everything, and then Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, just cool temperatures into Tuesday, but we don't see any precipitation. We have to look for a rainbow with all of the trouble we've had yesterday, so Rhonda Phillips from Middlesex has drawn us a pretty rainbow, and I think that's a nice way to end the forecast, John. All right, Bob, uh, thank you very much. Now for the latest on what's happening statewide, let's go back to Tim Kent for a live report from the North Carolina Command Center. Tim? John, to no surprise, we understand that in a little bit later tonight, the governor is going to declare an official state of emergency, and he is going to appoint Heman Clark, who is the director of crime control and public safety, as the man in charge of implementing the state's emergency plan. Secretary Clark, how exactly is that going to work, and what's going to be the priority? Well, I, th I think the priority now that the immediate need